All right, so I'm currently on my way to CCIC, also known as Cherry Creek Innovation Campus. And what that is, is it's basically, I mean, I think of it as a glorified trade school. They pick out these industries in the world that they see a growing need for workers and laborers in the industry, and they're intentionally and purposely educating those specific fields and creating the skilled workers that are gonna be required to meet that deficit. Um, so that's a local school to here. It's like a few minutes from my parents' house. So I'm actually taking the day off work today. I'm going down there. I'm going to see what the students are up to, what they're working on, talk with Michael, the instructor, and yeah, just see what they got going on. everybody, how are we doing? My name is Mike DeGuitis with the Cherry Creek Innovation Campus. Welcome to our construction class. So you're sitting in the middle of Centennial, Colorado right now. You're sitting in the middle of a uh, high school construction program that's 16 to 18 year olds that are getting an introduction to the trades. Foundation through roof, uh, they get to see a little bit of everything. What beautiful. So in a minute, as we look around, you'll see our flooring system. Today we're laying out our walls. Uh, starting our wall assembly, and then we'll be moving on to exteriors. At the end of the day, it's, it's a student-built, student-run project uh, where they get basically an in introduction to the workforce, job training skills, and they're ready to get hired by someone like Jared with Kaufman Construction. Yeah, when you're setting your nail, don't even worry about the stud until you're like that far in, okay. because up until that point, it's not even hitting the stud. But here, if I give it one more decent smack, it'll, it'll be hitting the stud. So that's why I don't worry about it until I'm there. Because then it's only one hit, and then it's in. Same thing, you can set it, go in that part. Heck, if you really wanted to, you could even poke through a little bit. And then, yep. And then you don't have to worry about fighting with it until it's flush, you know? So we can lay them out together. Because we want to lay out the top and bottom plate to be the same. So the big thing we want is our window. Where do we got that? So it's at two lines, two foot. Yep, okay, great. So here, I'll just basically tell you what to pull. So two foot's the center of your window. Yeah, that's great. Sometimes I'll do, I'll hook it, and I actually like to hook my tape on both pieces because that makes sure they stay flush. And sometimes I'll put my pencil underneath my tape measure like that. Oh, that's, do that. That's pretty genius. Which makes it nice and easy. So now that's our center. Do you remember the size? It says 2.0, but it's, yeah, it's 25 because we added an inch. So basically, half of 25. Uh, 12 and a half. Bingo. So basically, you can pull your tape measure out past 25, and then you can just set 12 and a half right on your center line. So now you can mark the end of your tape, and then you can mark 25. <laughs> I need to make sure as you guys start to build your sidewalls that you understand the differences when you go on a rake, okay? So remember that a rake is that, is that angle wall, right? Anytime we've got the angle wall, we've got a rake, right? Okay, did you guys go over measurements for the window wall too or just the firewall? Okay, so then that's what we'll focus on today is just the firewall. So 15 and a quarter inch run, 15.11 pitch, 15 degree cut, right? 15.11 degrees, okay? Which means there are two different places you can pull from with your tape measure. One is correct, one is incorrect. 
Does that make sense? Okay. You are trying to mark here on the bottom of the plate, which means you need to pull from this point. Does that make sense? So how do you, what's your best way then to do that? So yeah, basically, if I was building this wall, what mm -hmm. I would do is I would first lay out my bottom plate, just how it is. Regular 16 on center. And then basically, I would take my measurements from my bottom plate and transfer that to the top plate. And in this case, it's a really simple layout, so I know that this is just gonna be 15 and a quarter and go. Mm -hmm. But on this wall, where there's a window and stuff, I would physically measure on my bottom plate to that, and then mm -hmm. I basically say like, okay, this to the center point of my King Star trimmer yep. is whatever, I punch it into my run, and then diagonal, and then I directly transfer it to the top plate. That just like keeps me more consistent, rather than trying to like figure it all out math-wise ahead of time, I just do the bottom one and then measure it. <laughs> but yeah, then what I do with these is pretty much the same thing. I'll pull this layout, and then I'll, I'll usually, because it helps to have the calculator and like push the buttons, but it's hard to do that and measure it at the same time. So I'll usually hook this, and then you're, I'll- And you're hooking the bottom, the long point. Yeah, I usually okay. hook the long point, just whichever side the studs are gonna contact. Right. That's the side I put my layout on. So anyways, yeah, I would do my, first measurement and I'd, I'd be holding the tape and I'd tell the guy marking, okay, mark 15, 13, 16 mm -hmm. and go. And, and, then that's, and that's him marking here on the low point. Yep. Okay, and then the next measurement then is gonna be to the next low point. Yep, exactly. Okay. So then I literally just, I hold the tape there to make sure it stays in the same spot and I just tell him all the way up. And I just use that thing I showed yep. you and I work my way up until my measurement gets bigger than the top plate. Yep. And then I know that I, 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 yeah. We don't need to go past that. Okay. Or he'll physically see it because the top plate will be cut already okay. and he won't be able to mark it. So that's okay. what I do. Um, and I, do, I tend to like, I don't really make like a list of everything ahead of time. Like I'm pretty much doing it on the fly as we're building it. So that's why instead of writing it down, I just measure the bottom and then go from there. Perfect, so. okay. Well, then we'll prop it up. Let's do uh, two two by four And the only difference, Marker, is we ran our blocking this way in the floor system, right? But they were So our joists are running this way. So that means I'm blocking the right It looks like the joists are running this way. No, because the sheets are running. I told you boys to, to come find me before you, you do that so I can fix this gap. So the first thing we got to do, that's like a 3 8 gap. We need to have a gap of equal or greater size here because I can't pull this any tighter than what we have there. So first, I'm going to set the saw to inch and a half. I'll jump up there and basically give ourselves that gap. There we go. We'll take all these screws out, which it looks like there's only two, which is nice. So first, I'll throw one screw in here, just to give this a pivot point. I'm going to leave it a little loose on purpose. Start one on the end. Start one on this end. There we go. You might want to step on the inside to actually see it. But now these are a straight line. As we pull this down, it's going to shorten this distance. So here's our plate gap. And I can apply pressure. It's going to close it up. This thing is a little bit out of square. So it's actually tight on the outside. Beautiful. Because at that point, I also really told him, I was like, so normally if I know two walls are budding, just set your studs back a little. So that way, because that's all it is, is you're just you're fighting the- your plates together? Yeah. Bring your plates, but not, you know. Put it down. Under the roof. Jared, you go there first, and then where? And then, so once those are hit, 
and then this guy's in too. Then that just kind of locks it there. Then I just hit a couple toenail of under there without like twisting it up like. Oh, okay. Ulysses, let's get going on the top plate. Start from the low point. Just keep it flush. You put the board where, yeah, keep it flush. There you go. And then put your, your stud on the X. You'll see the X on the top plate. Yeah, yeah, that's where it goes. So slide, slide, that end stud is kind of leaning out. So let's pull this like this and then pull that end stud in. That would be cool. Keep this a little more. Can you get this in? It's a um, crown right there. Down here? No, it's up top. Oh, I got you. I'm just coming up. Um, you gotta make sure it's straight. There you go. All right, so yeah, so you've got the paper. We're gonna start with our plates. That's always the most important part to get right, right off the bat. All right, there's my bottom plate. I'm just gonna set that there for now. All right, so now I've got my bottom plate and my top plate, so we'll do our layout. We're gonna start with our layout on the bottom plate. We're from the end, 16 to the center, right? Yeah, we're going 15 and a quarter. So if this is our short point over there, I'll pull from here. I don't mark the ends because it's pretty obvious that we're gonna get a stud there. So that's it for my bottom. So now we can do 15 and a quarter run. That's to my first layout. And then you can just hit diagonal. 15 and 13 sixteenths. I can mark that edge. So now at this stage, I would say the wall is ready to nail because everything is ready for it. I usually will just kind of set that aside because when I'm nailing it, it's going to fly all over the place. So you guys saw Don do it probably. If, does anybody know who Larry Hahn is? If you want to see something really satisfying, look him up on YouTube. And he would hammer nails bigger than this in with like one hit all the time. And it is the most satisfying thing to watch. And he was just like the nicest old man. But anyways, this is a trick that he would use. You get your handful of nails, you get them all pointing in the same direction. Then you can kind of grab the heads of the nails and flip them that way. And I just drop them in a pocket that's easy to access. And then I grab two at a time. You can get your nail basically halfway through the board before it even matters. So you can see the tip of the nail is sticking out a tiny bit right there, which is perfect. Now I can get my board lined up and then one tap and it's locked in. It's not gonna move anywhere. So, and the same concept goes for all the rest. If I was nailing this stud, you can tell that's not good. You can see that with your eye. You can see that's not good, you know? That is pretty good. We check it with a square. We're right on. So the concept goes, if, it's, if you can develop your eye to be able to see those things, then you can save that time by trusting your eye. If you can see that it's wrong, you can probably train your eye to see when it's right. And then, there we go. That's the last one. So now at this stage, this wall's done. My rule of thumb would be, when a wall is done, get it out of the way because this is not that much lumber that's taking up a lot of space. So I'd say like if we know where this guy's going, let's, let's pick it up and, and take it there because this takes up a lot less space than when it's laying on the floor. So now we can, you know, we'll set it next to its best friend right here and we're ready to go. So the students are all gone now, but these are what they were working on. What they're building here is basically a floor system with this little C channel there so a forklift can pick it up because these are actually going to a homeless community in Denver. Um, they build these every year and give them to the city. It's a project 
that the city is working on personally. So that's something really cool that the school does. Um, and I also love it because they're giving actual construction projects to these students. These get inspected, um, permitted, everything. Like these are construction pro projects that this school is contracted to do, which is awesome because that is real world construction experience for these students. This is one instance I was able to give some of the kids some advice. You see our layout is double sided here. It's hard to tell from this angle, but that stud bay is bigger than this one. This might be a better spot. <laughs> this is 16, and this is like 12. So what happened is their plates got flipped, or perhaps flipped is the best way. So that was something I was explaining. That's an advantage of having one-sided layout because then your line is here, your X is here, and you can mash out on the other side, and that'll keep you consistent. But in this case, it just didn't get measured, and now it needs to be cut apart and renailed. but as is the nature of learning things. All right, so we're all done at the Cherry Creek Innovation Campus. I'm heading back home. Um, I was able to visit there a couple days in a row while we're between jobs, and just kind of see what the kids are working on, be able to offer some of the advice that I'd have, which isn't crazy, but it's something, you know. Um, so that was really special for me. Um, I'm really looking forward to helping these kids and kind of doing some more one-on-one -on -one coaching when Skills USA time comes, because some of these kids are going to be competing. So that is going to be really special to be able to help those kids develop their skills as far as the competition goes. So let me know what you guys think if you'd like me to do some more footage and more videos when we actually are training for Skills USA um, and kind of what that competition looks like. But yeah, check them out, Cherry Creek Innovation Campus. They're a great school, they're a great group to support. They really do a fantastic job of providing career help, support, resources for these kids. So it's definitely just a great environment. And uh, yeah, thanks to Michael for having me out and letting me talk to the kids and embarrass myself and help them with things and whatnot. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you want to see more. I do stuff like this. I do instructional videos. I just do kind of day, day in and day out stuff as far as what it's actually like with the construction business and as a lead framing carpenter. And uh, yeah, if there's anything in particular you want to see, comment it below. Yeah, have a good one.